but it is also something completely unique, and that's why I want to share that with you. RNA fragments that my father perfected. This is about platelets. Platelets are those uh, cells inside the blood that help create a clot. And those cells, we are supposed to have a normal level between 150,000 to 400,000. But when we receive chemotherapy, this, those cells are destroyed by chemotherapy, and then there is an increase of bleeding. And uh, when there is uh, bleeding, it's called, to, to a high level, it's called thrombocytopenia, when there is not enough uh, platelets left. So here what looks like when you have a patient to whom you give chemotherapy. At the beginning, uh, the bone marrow, which is created the uh, white blood cells and platelets, is able to create a decent number of platelets. But as you give more and more chemotherapies, every time you have a severe drop of the cells, and little by little, the bone marrow gets exhausted and is no longer able to produce a decent number of platelets. So at this, you get there, where, you know, there is not enough platelets, the patient is bleeding, it's very dangerous, and the prognosis is very bad. And as of today, there is nothing, nothing on the market for platelets. There are products for uh, white blood cells, growth factors which are given for white blood cells, but not for platelets. So Mirko Belchansky thought, how are platelets created in the first place? Well, they are created by the bone marrow, and they are created by the DNA of the bone marrow. So he said, well, why don't I support the DNA of the bone marrow in his synthesis, job of synthesis? Uh, synthesis by providing this bone marrow by a little primer, a little RNA which is going to come and prime the lagging chain of the DNA. So that's what he did. And uh, here you have in vitro the normal rate of synthesis of DNA. And when you add this little RNA fragment, you see the dramatic improvement on the rate of synthesis of the DNA, of the bone marrow. So it's little fragments of um, E. coli K12. E. coli K12, don't freak out when I say E. coli. E. coli K12 is known to be um, non-mutagenic, non-pathogenic, and we remove uh, all the membrane, uh, we, re we completely remove all the proteins. There is just left the RNA, which is completely purified and chopped into little pieces. So no, no reason to uh, be afraid with the word RNA from E. coli K12. Beljansky gave that to rabbits when he was at the Pasteur Institute. Those rabbits received a very hefty dose of nasty chemotherapy called cyclophosphamide. And you see the control group of rabbits, all of them die within 10 days. But the rabbits who receive the RNA fragments, every time their white blood cells and platelets are going up and up and up and up again after uh, each chemotherapy. And at the end of 60 days, all the rabbits were alive. So, we had, at, with Cancer Treatment Centers of America, a clinical trial on people who were at the verge of thrombocytopenia. So technically, they were not sick. They were at the verge of thrombocytopenia. How did they get there? Well, they had cancer, and they had uh, received already a number of chemotherapy sessions, which are dropped their uh, number of platelets to the verge of thrombocytopenia. So we have uh, here patients who have different kinds of cancer, 
pancreas, head, neck, breast, colon, esophageal, lung. They have all received uh, nasty chemotherapies before. They are heavily pretreated. Many had metastatic disease even to the bone marrow. And we do again dose escalation design. So we give them 20, the first group 20 milligrams. If they are doing well, we go to 40 milligrams, then 60 milligrams, and we decided to go, we would go up to 80 milligrams to see what everything was well tolerated. In each uh, cohort, I mean, it would be 10, uh, 10 patients, okay? So a total of 31 patients. And uh, they were all at the verge of uh, thrombocytopenia. So here you have a patient uh, who is uh, start to receive the RNA fragments, and you see that its uh, number of platelets is going up and up and up and up again after each chemotherapy. There is no this uh, typical uh, slide uh, down that we have seen, which for what is typical of a patient undergoing chemotherapy. And we gave them here 40 milligrams, and he was not sick, so we gave him 60 milligrams, and then we went up to 80 milligrams, no side effect. Platelets level recovered quickly following the, the, the nadir, which is the lowest point. No unplanned dose reduction, no platelet transfusion. Patient completed the treatment plan. Here we see another patient, and uh, you see that every time, again, a very nice ability of the bone marrow to create a decent number of platelets. And we, here we stopped the RNA fragments. And you can see that the bone marrow is able, even if we had stopped, to produce a decent number of platelets. Like the bone marrow has been protected during all those cycles of chemotherapies. So patient totally protected from thrombocytopenia, most need is above threshold for thrombocytopenia, so he never went, even at the lowest part, he never went to the level of thrombocytopenia. Recovery le levels were well within normal levels, so the upper thing when we do not give chemotherapy was he was well into the normal limit, like somebody who is not going on the chemotherapy. So uh, the 31 patients, no adverse events, no patient underwent a reduction of their dose of chemotherapy while on RNA fragments. RNA fragments appear to accelerate the recovery in platelet counts. RNA fragments appear to stabilize or elevate the platelet number at the nadir. And here is a publication regarding uh, this uh, clinical trial, again, done at uh, cancer treatment centers of, of America.